Everton have been linked with a move, heavily linked with a move for Illiman and Day. Lots of stories around him joining Everton football. Fabrizio Romano has even turned round and done the old here we go. Uh, so therefore, we're going to have a look at Illiman and Day, his stats, his profile, things like that. I'm going to have a chat about whether or not I think he will be a good addition to Everton. So let's have a look at his uh, profile. Here we go. Illiman and Dai was born in Rouen in France. He is uh, 24 years of age. His height, 1.8 metres. Uh, his preferred foot is right. And the fee they're talking about overall is a 20 million euro. Um, that is with add-ons and stuff as well in there. Uh, is, we have a look at his career stats. He's played 143 career games scoring 27 goals, and he has got 19 assists in there. His favourite two positions, either centre-forward through the middle or an attacker midfielder. He's been capped 20 times by Senegal, and he has scored two times for them so far. I personally look at him as somebody who could play in the Decore role. I think Everton... Sean Dyche in particular has had an issue when Abdelai Decore hasn't been available for Everton. Dyche has been here across two seasons. He lost them in his first season when Decore was uh, sent off for removing an eyelash from Harry Kane's eye, just picking that out and Kane went done Tom Daly style diving all over the pitch and he was sent off and we struggled to fill that gap. Um, and then more more so last season after like the core, he was in tremendous form around December when he got an injury at Burnley and he was out for a while. Didn't really recover his form, but the period that he was out, we Sean Dykes in particular didn't have an answer for who could play there. He tried Jack Harrison there, he tried Andre Gomez there. Other players went and, and played off. Dan Juma was there in the first cup game against Palace. No one really did what Abdelai Decore could do, and it's been an issue. It has been an issue across the across Sean Dyche's time here, and when Decore was back in the side, like I just said, he wasn't as sharp. And in fact, he didn't score another goal from December till the final home game of the season against Sheffield United when he headed in Dominic Calvert Lewin's cry. I mean, he couldn't miss; he was on the goal line. Uh, and he just never got th them goals back or that effectiveness back. Having a player who could actually go and play in that role as well and give us that extra option in there, I think is a massive thing for this squad. I think it, it'd make it easier for Sean Dyche. After like the core, I, I still believe that some of his best work is actually when he's coming from deeper. I think he proved that, and particularly in the Brentford game when he went back into midfield. He can get about the pitch. He does. Uh, he has lots of interceptions. Yes, his passing ain't great, but I just think we... I think sometimes the game passes him by when he's off the striker. His goals were invaluable, don't get me wrong, and he scored a lot of goals for Sean Dykes, but I do think sometimes in that number 10 position, you need to be either a dribbler in there or someone who gets older a ball, can link up a little bit better with the striker. And I think the core doesn't always do that, and we do lose a little bit of his uh, mobility when he's up there. So I think having a real genuine option for that position is a massive thing for Sean Dyke. Uh, let's have a look at Dyke's numbers from the final season, or oh, sorry, last season, uh, at Marseille. So where we can see this is his numbers from last season. He had 30 appearances. This is just in league earned. 30 games, 19 of them as starts. Uh, goals, three. Shots per game, he was averaging 1.2 shots per game. He missed five big chances. Uh, he had registered three assists for Marseille, and he created four big chances. He's not a huge goal scorer. We know that. His best season was at Sheffield United. We'll have a look at that in a minute. But like I've just said, he is a player who can play in the hole. I think the thing for Marseille last year there was a lot of there was a lot of um, turbulence behind the scenes as well and he was moved around a little bit and I think for Everton he'd be coming in not as a centre forward, more as a, a second striker, more as an attacking midfield player. He can he can operate wide, but it's not something that I would like to see uh, Sean Dyke using uh, you know, all the time as a winger because I think Everton need explosive wingers this season. I think the pace, lack of pace within the side last season really caught us at times and I think that's what we need and we'll be looking uh, certainly for quick players in those wide areas but he is someone who can go out there and do a job as well and that versatility will be needed at Everton this season. 
So as you can see, th these are the positions where he has played. Um, and when I'm talking about the versatility, that'll be needed at Everton this season. He's played 50 games as a centre-forward in his career. He scored 10 goals and registered 13 assists from that position. As an attacking midfield player, he has played 32 times, scored 7 goals and got 2 assists. As a second striker, so a little bit higher, maybe in the Decore role, 14 games and seven goals and two assists. So that's not bad numbers, one in two for that position, and that would really help Everton. He's also played eight games as a right winger, got one goal and one assist from there, and he's played eight games as a left winger. Hasn't scored a goal from that position, but has registered registered an assist. So there again, we're talking, no, that versatility, that just gives you a little bit of an idea of what he's done while he's been in those positions. His career so far, he began at Boreham Wood, uh, Sheffield United signed him from Boreham Wood, and that's really where he developed. Uh, we can have a look at his uh, Sheffield United numbers in his final season there, before he went off to Marseille. So here we go. So his numbers from his final season at Sheffield United, I mean, first season he really played championship 30 games, seven goals, but we're going to have a look at his heat map in a minute. Sheffield United, but his numbers, he registered 46 games in the championship, 14 goals he scored, and that was playing centre-forward and playing in the second striker. We can have a look at his uh, Sheffield United heat map here and see that he is basically all over the place. <laughs> um, but operating in wide areas, dropping into those areas on either side of the pitch. If we compare that with his Marseille heat map, there, this is the one from last season, predominantly that's on the right-hand side, and that's kind of where Marseille used them, and, and maybe that'll be an indication when you're just looking at those heat maps as to why the goals potentially dried up. But Kevin Thelwell did want them last summer, uh, he, he made inquiries about him. I think, obviously, Everton just didn't have the money last summer to, to buy Illim and, and Dai, and he went off to Marseille. And Everton have quite clearly kept tabs on him since then, and, and because it hasn't gone amazingly well for him at Marseille, that is why he is uh, being made available now. That's why Everton are so keen to do the deal. We're just going to have a quick look at... I'm going to look at his FB ref chart, uh, which is a stats-based thing. And if we have a look at it here... This is all a percentile. So basically, if you're in the 100th percentile, you're brilliant. And if you're in the first percentile, you're not very good. And everything varies in between. But the biggest thing he's good for when you're looking at that that chart, he had 91st percentile for pass completion, decent passer of the ball, and an 82% uh, take on, 82nd percentile for take on. So good dribbler of the ball. I'd like him better progressive carries, but where he's receiving the ball, that's going to register low anyway because he's in the final third. Um, his progressive passes received as well. He's on the 64th percentile. But again, this will be dictated by the area in which he plays in. The other ones, you can see them low down. If you're looking at him for, you know, compared, I guess, to someone like Jan Kuba Minter, his, his percentiles for things like dribbling and progressive carries and, uh, you know, explosive runs and things like that are all really, really high. A lot of them are on the 99th percentile, which is, which stands out. But you have to balance that off with playing in the Eredivisie and also the kind of player he is. He is an explosive winger. He picks the ball up and travels with it. Whereas when you're looking at the, the chart here, which might be off-putting to some people, it is because he's receiving the ball in that final third. There's not really much place for him to go. But the dribbling is uh, is not bad at all. The pass completion isn't bad. You know, is, is quite good in there. So that is really that's important. I think for the role that Everton would want for Illiman and Die to play. Listen, it seems like it's all progression. He seems like when you're looking for someone to play in that hole he will be a sensible option. There is others, of course, there is, listen, there's players all over the world. I say it every transfer window. But where Everton are, you know, a deal and right now, if this deal is able to be done between the two teams, then, you know, why not? Illiman and Dai could well be on his way into Everton. That is all the indications. We thought we'd have a little look at him today. Let me know what you think. In the comments section below, do you want him? Are you impressed by him? Are you a bit put off by his numbers at Marseille last season? You know, but trying to improve our attacking options, this one might be someone that helps us with that. Let me know in the comments section below. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. See you later.